Hello everyone, it's Ginger here. Welcome back to another video and we are doing more of our meadow flowers. We love our flowers. Um, what we're going to start off with is just marking out where I want everything layout wise and then we will slot, 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 is that even a word? Start, let's correct our English here. We will English today. Um, we're going to start by getting our base foundation layer down which we'll probably do a underpainting probably with water and um, there's lots of kind of neutral greens as the base color and then these beautiful pops of color so really want to bring that out now the format of the reference picture is portrait and i am working narrow landscape so there's going to be a little bit of um interpretation shall we say as we kind of spread this out so hopefully Hopefully this should work. So I am going to use a uh, Caran d'Ache uh, pastel pencil, which I am, you just about to see that. I don't know if it's actually gonna focus. You gonna focus? There we go, focused. Um, that's what we're using just to mark everything out today. So we've got a, what looks like a tree line and a bush line, um, and then the kind of wildflower line. So I think what we're actually gonna do is crop it from the bush. The bush will then become our back tree line. So this is our back tree line, which we're going to put here, quite high up. It's also quite dark. So we know that that's going to be a fairly dark colour. We also know it's going to be pretty dark around here, um, which is our immediate foreground. I always like to kind of up the darkness in the corner so it kind of focuses you in for the middle. Because if you darken here and lighten here, your eye is always drawn naturally. Now, in this reference photo, the light is actually coming that way. So what I might do is bring the darkness down sharper this way and then tailing off this way. And that, also, as soon as you can see this, it kind of, it's already pointing, you know, I'm just going to draw an arrow, that we want the light that way, if that makes sense. So that's where we're aiming for. Whether it ends up being like that, I have no idea. Then we've got all these beautiful, beautiful flowers. So we've got these tall pink ones, which I'm just kind of going to add in. Just loosely draw them in so that I know they are. We've got the red one. Um, I just want to kind of make sure that I'm marking where they're going. So there's that one there. That's like that. Um, that one's also that way. Um, and then we've got this beautiful, I love the colours on this, it's pretty amazing colours um, going on in this. Also got this big white daisy flower in the middle of all this. I'm probably not going to actually do that. Just these little, there's all these kind of little yellow, little mini yellow daisy ones that are going on down here. So I'm just going to kind of infill so that they're here. There's another little daisy one, one that's kind of pointing the wrong direction, so it's kind of down. Um, kind of slip of a one there, and we've got a double kind of there, which is fine. And then put this one in here. So, what I'm trying to do is spread out the layout of this, but also to keep us pointing in, in this direction. There's another one of pink. We've also got this, it looks almost like fennel growing in this field, growing everywhere, but to be honest, I'm probably gonna put that in over the top, probably in pastel pencil, just because I'm not gonna be able to get that definition with the pastels. I mean, I can with very sharp edges, but in this case, I do wanna just kind of give this a little bit more um, definition with the really, like, I don't want masses of detail, but I want enough detail that it's clear, so. Um, I need to make sure that that does actually go in. We've got another one of the kind of hot pink flowers here. Um, um, this is like a, another one of the dark reds there. Just kind of a funny, funny direction there. Got like a pink daisy hiding here with a another smaller one in front of it that's brighter, so that's there. Um, I'm just kind of 
no motel. Mais um mês. Some of these are going, just so that I know. And then in the background we've got some of these yellow ones again, but these are all like this. Now we've got the two red ones here. There's some really tiny little I don't know what these are, but tiny little red ones, kind of like this. I'm not really sure what they are, but we're going to put them. We're going to put them in, but we're going to put a wider bunch in of them. They're on doing kind of stalks going in every direction accordingly. So you can kind of see here's our main flower line, and then as it disappears, so we've got little two reds there. I mean, I'm going to lose most of this detail anyway, but that's fine, actually. Um, because I don't want... I don't want too much. And then, it's all this yellow at the back here is pretty amazing, but it's also into the bush line, so I need to make sure that we, we do get to pick that up. Because there is a lot of it. It will kind of break up this line. Um, I've got a few bits and pieces over here, but not much, I just don't want to, because we are going that way. Less on this side, more going that way. Right. I think that's enough of the pastel pencil. Hopefully you guys can see all that. Oh, I've got a can of Dr. Pepper. Um, yep, that's what's keeping me going tonight. And we are going to lay down some colour. Question is, what colour? Because this is quite a quite complicated painting. Um, so what am I going to lay down? I wonder whether or not I want to go for dark colour actually to lay down so let's go with our that's a purple no I don't want a purple let's go with our dark blues actually go with our dark blues so we're going to go with our dark up here let's stop my board down I've got a really big board on at the moment because my other, my other bit is not, not doing so well so need to trim this one down and then this will be my new backing board. Unfortunately my old one has pretty much succumbed to years of work, as after a while. Um, I do recommend always using a backing board when you work and it, there's a couple of different reasons. First of all it should, ignoring how bouncy this one is, should give you um, extra stability and support from your easel. Um, and secondly it's it gives you the ability to focus. So for example, I've got a board this big. I could stick a copy of the reference photo up. I could put a color chart up. I could do a tonal thumbnail and I wanna put that up. And it gives me the space to be able to have all the things I need around the painting while I work. In this case, and what you can't see because it's off screen, um, I have my Samson tablet on the side with the reference image on. I have all my pastel trays. Um, which are to the right of me, along the workbench, along with my pencil case with all the pastel pencils, and then my pot of water and paintbrushes. So I have everything kind of laid out. I didn't need to do a thumbnail for this one, so it didn't really bother me too much. But if I was doing some of my really big pieces, um, I do tend to use a bigger board that allows me to put everything I need around it, um, or at least around the surface that I'm working on just because it gives me all that visual information without having to constantly look everywhere. So obviously for this, I'm having to look sideways constantly and just check, you know, what I'm doing against my reference image, which is fine, but sometimes it is easier if it is all around the painting where you need it. Or you could just be lazy like me, and just, I couldn't be bothered today, but um, I have a terrible migraine, so. Right, we're going to use the lid for my water. 
<laughs> for the pastels so I can show you what I'm using. Um, what do I need? Oh yeah. Need a couple of things. What I want to do is use a lighter colour just to kind of mark out where these flowers are so I don't lose them. And of course, yes, blue on a painting which is going to be predominantly grey-green, but, you know, it'll work, trust me. It's not so much about the colour, it's about the tone that comes through um, underneath. That's the important bit. This is our mid. What am I going to do? A bit quite lightly at this end, just because that's the lighter side. Now, this, I admit this is going to look an absolute atrocious mess when I wash this out, so just bear with me because you will see how this plays. Right, so there's our three wash colours down. Let's see what colour my dirty water is. It's actually very rare that I actually clean the water, which probably is bad practice, but um, it doesn't actually make that much difference to me. Right, just start with the lightest colours, which, as you'll see, won't be as light as you think, but there's a good reason for it. on the floor, always good. Good thing it's a wooden floor. Um, for those of you that want to do this sort of thing at home, if you want to follow along, um, don't do it on carpet. Pastel and carpet, generally not a good mix. It is an absolute nightmare. There are ways to get pastel out of carpet. Do not use fluids ever because all you do is activate the pigment which acts like a dye and will dye any material it goes into. So your best bet is always to dry and get pastel out of your material while it's dry. It's relatively okay for clothes. Um, you know, putting it on a decent wash through on your washing machine will get most pastel stains out, but carpets and rugs, yeah, you can't chuck those in the washing machine, I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, I would always recommend, you know, working on sensible surfaces um, it's gonna run, but that's fine actually. I could do with it running. You can see that it's darker. Yep. It's definitely more blue in the mid. It'll be even more darker at the top in a minute. Just gonna take some of that water and just give it a bit of a spread. I'm not I do this haphazardly, and the main reason for this is this is really just to give me an idea of where everything is, where my dark are, where my lights is kind of lights are and work on it. Now something you'll notice about this paper and this is Cancer Me Tense Touch um, and once I get all this down you'll see it a bit more as I work um, that you can see all this where it runs down it's almost like salt blooms. Um, if you've worked with watercolour you'll know what I'm talking about where if you add salt to paper 
um, with watercolour down, it will form blooms. Well, this won't form blooms because it's running down the page, but it is blooms effectively. And the reason for this, unbelievably, most I don't know how many people are aware of this, is that there is a slight, I do mean slight, powder coating um, on this paper. And for the most part, you're not going to notice it when you're using pastel. However, when you add water, if you don't add enough water, um, because the, the powder kind of acts to stop the water getting into the grain of the paper, um, it forces the paper, the water out and the water runs down, which you can see that when I do this here. So it doesn't look like there's any water there. And then as soon as I start scrubbing, it kind of picks it up. Well, it's one of those funny things really. Um, and I didn't really know about this and it's the more I've experimented with it, the more I've kind of realized that there is stuff on here um, that I wasn't expecting. And actually I don't mind it. It doesn't really affect what I'm doing because I'm going to work over the top of the, or the um, underpainting anyway. So that's kind of like, well, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just making sure that I'm just using water just to kind of wash out some of where the flower heads are. As you can see, as I do that, you can kind of see, love this. Um, not very useful, but we're going to take most of that out. Thank you. You okay? Forget it, you're dripping. Thank you for that. Let's do, take that one out. There's one there, pick one there. I think what I might do is dry the brush and I can take a bit more of this out. So you can see where I'm just taking some of the water and pigment back off the page where the flower heads are. Sometimes it's easier if you've got too much detail to do. So there's one head, there's another one there. So I'm just drying the brush on a towel next to me. Um, and then just taking this out. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure there was another one in there somewhere. Another one there. Another one there. <laughs> Slowly unearthing them all. Here. Oh, I got one there, haven't we? Yep, there's one there. So what you see is we've got our, this is our bush line at the top and then we've got our Darkest coming down, light area here, and then we've kind of got all of our flowers in various places. Right, let that dry. I know it looks absolutely awful at the moment, but that is fine. That's what we want to see. It's a kind of a greeny grey blues that I've picked out for this just because I don't want to mess with the colour tone because uh, it's, it's a lot of kind of grey, very neutral greens in this but that's what's going to make the flowers really pop so that's what we want to see. No, it has warped slightly, but it was kind of expected. That's why I taped everything down, so it doesn't warp too much. But, unbelievably, that's it dry. One of the reasons why I love using this paper so much is it dries super fast. Right, now, um, I'm going to get some darks in first. I do want to stick with the blue darks. Just need to find, where is it? So this is a purpley blue, 
Um, probably more of an aubergine. This is one of my blue earths. You just about see that. I can't even read the number anymore, so good guess as to what it might be. Um, so I'm just gonna lay that down. This is kind of where our, our line is. I'm just trying to decide whether or not I do bring that down to there. That will do. <laughs> down so that it comes down to this corner this corner is going to be quite dark that's what i want to see and bottom generally tends to be darker anyway because this is our foreground so remember that our light is going that way so we're gonna bring this down and then come back up trying to avoid picking up too much of that but so start layering some of these neutrals um what a dark neutral one of our dark greens this is in fact the other half of it is still in its wrapper go me normally i take the wrapper straight off but it's because these this one was so long um in fact all of these were so long i actually can split them in half and still have the wrapper on one half of it so those of you that can see if it's actually going to focus, you're going to focus? Um, close enough. So it's a Mount Vision, number 700. Just kind of like a, what do we call it, dark olive green maybe? I suppose that's the closest we're probably going to get to it. It's quite, it is a good colour. Um, so yeah. It's almost as dark as the colour I've already got down, so you won't see too much of this, but it is... It's kind of important for getting some tone in. Try to make sure that I get the edge. Always, wherever I put tape. Yeah, I'm using my little finger to point. Let's point with a pencil. Wherever I'm using, wherever I've put tape, you end up with a ridge. So what you always try to make sure is that you get up into that ridge um, with a pencil, or get your fingers in there, because otherwise you you end up with gaps, which you really don't want. So, right. What's in here? Maybe not too much. Yeah, that will do. So, there's a dark green. And now, where do I want to go with this? So I've got a few options for which direction I want to go. Because it is neutral, but it's not, not necessarily cold. So I've got to be very careful about going too cold because uh that definitely won't work how does this is this gonna be too green yeah well i don't know actually well, that kind of helps actually is i kind of need this for this bush at the back more than anything else so around some of these flower heads.
I'm just using this to kind of make some marks while I go as well, just because I don't want to put too much in. Am I also moving? Am I moving? Guys, am I moving slowly away from you? I think I am. <laughs> but there's going to be a lot of neutral colours coming into this shortly, so I'm going to make sure that I get enough of what I need. Now, before I go too far, I think I want to get in like, some of these flowers, don't I? Yeah, I do. So, what do we want to get in where? I want to get in some of these yellows. Now, the further ones away are going to be a little bit more neutral. And a little paler than our ones that are going to be at the front. This is a new pastel, hence the how thin and rectangular it is. I know it's not going to focus very well, but there we go. So, I'm going to kind of put some of these in there. marking these in I don't really care what they look like because they're so blurry and so far away it doesn't matter it absolutely doesn't matter so the whole idea is they represent flowers and flowers they are now I've brought these parts from this pink one in here but I mean that one must be one of the yellow ones. I need a yellow one there as well. And there, because that breaks up this edge. I've got to be careful about this this edge. I don't want to lose it because this is our hedge line and this kind of gives our shaping, so we don't want to lose it. Um, so I'm trying to be really careful. I've lost all the ones that I had down here, which I'm kind of not surprised at actually. So I think I'm going to. about this is the new pastel is pretty pretty hard but what it's doing is it's blending easily in with what I've got down here which gives it a slightly more kind of I'm in the background look which is fine so that's exactly what I want there's another one there another one there another one here go into the pinks at this point so I don't want to too much of that in, and then yeah, starting to kind of get there. That's what we want to see. Starts looking a bit funny, but you kind of get the idea that there's a f that whatever these were, they're on a bit of a takeover bid. Right, I'm gonna pop that down for a minute. I want to get in the pale, pale pink. Oh, it is a blue toned pale pink, which isn't going to help too much. It's a color I don't really have a lot of, but I do have this beautiful. This is a another blue earth see if it's going to allow me to focus on that one which 
be able to see that one, which is V4A. It's kind of like a violet colour. Um, so that's what we're going to work with. Oh, that worked, didn't it? Um, Oops, a bit crumbly as well, this one. That's fine. And then... Just using the edge, just to kind of drag it out. So it gives us this nice... Kind of feel... Another one. Which is this one here, I think. This one put in. I don't know what any of these flowers are, by the way. They all look like weird kind of daisies. Lots and lots of different types, which is really strange. But, uh, like, well, that's fine. Don't mind that. If you wonder what I'm doing is these flowers you can see that are very much in the foreground, so the pinks and the bright reds, they I've kind of shifted out a, more, a lot more and up so that they can kind of break this boundary between the hedge and the actual field because otherwise you end up with too much of a straight line and it really doesn't look good. Um, it becomes too obvious. I'm just gonna get little bits of this all over the place, but that's fine. There's a few kind of weird. I'm not gonna put much, but just there's little pink marks here and there. I mean, it isn't a pink really. This is a kind of pinky violet. And we need a red. I mean, this red is a stunning colour, absolutely stunning colour. Um, I've got really not much that's actually in the way of it. So I'm going to see if this pink will do and then I can overlay a red on top. So, um, I've got to put it here, which is slightly too much in the middle. So I'm actually going to move this one to here. And slightly more off because um, I want it to follow the fact that it's got a couple of companion ones that are kind of hiding over here. And we've got another one which is kind of here. And a red one which is here, which we're just going to do that with. Got a little bit of one here. We just got occasional flex over here. Not much, just where that one kind of goes off in that direction. Now, what I want to do is very nice, not quite a nice dark turquoise. Um, but actually, I want something a bit more neutral. Just to kind of help with this bush. But actually, I don't think it's going to work too much. What I do want to do is blend in this top edge a wee bit. So I don't have to worry about it later. Grey blue, so it's not a green. 
but it will keep this how we want it. And yes, I am going around and over the top and into the flowers and all sorts. And that is fine because some of these flowers are in amongst all of this. They hide in amongst everything else that's going on. And you don't want, like, you don't want all these flowers to just be sitting on top of your work. You need them to be part of the work so that it actually looks like it's part of it rather than actually, you know, if you, <laughs> see if I can find a better way of explaining it. If I just sat them, if I just dumped these colours on top of a background, they would stick out like a sore thumb. Um, and part of that would be because of the fact that you've put it, or you've put these bright colours down on top of this um, neutral colour, and they will no longer they will no longer work together. They'll start working against each other, which is you don't want really so that's me just bringing this blue I'm not really sure if we can call it a blue but it's only a colour um, just into this This is where it kind of picks up. See, there is some of this light kind of pick up, picks up onto the brush, so I don't want to make it too much, but I definitely do want to make sure I get some of that in. We started greying this out a wee bit. We need to come in with a few more of our greens. I kind of want the next green up. I've got a few, got a few other greens that are like green grey, like this one. on this side as well but not as high so we can bring that in all right looking suitably messy now good right now we want to bring in our olive which is it's another mount vision one this is mount vision 211. Um, so it is an olive colour. It's just to bring some of this green back in.
Right. That's a bit better. I think I just need to just use this to emphasize a few things. Remember, there will be a fair bit of pencil work on top of this yet, so um, at that point it will suddenly, suddenly start coming to life, which is what we want. Um, I'm going to go back in a bit more with, with my dark, though. Too much of the fact it's dark at the top, and specifically a little bit more darker on this side. I like to use the kind of edge, so obviously it's got a side edge on this pastel because it's well, it's not square, it's rectangular, but it's chunky rectangular. Um, but it has a nice edge, and it means that I can kind of this and that that's going to give me some of the darks between stalks and leaves that you wouldn't that you wouldn't be able to get with the rest of the pastels because obviously they're more rounded round is great but there is a limit That's a bit better, isn't it? As we start to delve into that, what I want to do is lighten this. Oh, look how, look how dark my fingertips are. Um, where's my really light colour? This is a... Which one of this? I think this is a unison. Yeah, it is a unison. Um, it's not that unison that I've got in my hand, because that's the... That's the greenier one but this is the bluer one um this is not white this is green or white with a hint of green and i just want to help with the direction i'm going with um the light end actually it's annoying me I think I just need to take that up a wee bit Okay, I think that's a bit better, yeah, that is a bit better. Some of this kind of going in this direction as well, but not much, so... I'm just 
just want it just just a few lines and that's all right background is annoying me so i'm gonna just kind of blend a bit of this in and then i might add some more of the green in i think beautiful kind of hazy effect which is kind of what you want because these are all background flowers you don't really see them they're there but that's it so I probably want to do take out this yellow because I do want to add a few more also just Lighten it a little bit. because you just got to kind of look at where you think things are versus where they actually are in the painting. I don't need them to be where they are in the painting. I'm quite happy just kind of making this up as I go. And the reason for that is because when it comes to meadows and things, flowers just do their own thing. Um, and realistically, you should really think about that when you're doing these sorts of paintings is, okay, yes, the photographer has captured this, at this point in time and that is beautiful but but you do want to be able to to go right well this is my painting and yes the photographer captured that but i want to be able to just go right well actually i think there's probably a flower hiding here or i don't think that flower's in quite the right place for this composition so i'm gonna you know add Add this one in here and add that one in there and that's that's the freedom that you get as an artist to go okay well um this is what's in the photograph and it's great but i need to add i i feel like i need some more here and more there and that's just, that's fine that's absolutely fine too many people kind of spend a lot of their time going Oh, you shouldn't really change what was from the photograph if you're copying from. I'm not copying. This is the, this is the problem. I think that's where the problem lies is the word copying. I'm not copying from the photograph. For a start, the photograph is in portrait. I'm working weird landscape. Um, you know, there's already some interesting uh, issues and additions to how I'm working. But this is the flexibility and freedom you get when you work with these sorts of systems. Now, I'm gonna get in on my. Beautiful blue earth yellows. I love this colour. It is gorgeous. Um, and it's going to kind of start bringing some, some of this to life. Incidentally, I'm not sure how much of this I want to bring to life because I don't want to make it too obvious, but you know. There's also some of this in, in this as well, but I don't want to put too much in because also I appreciate there is a, there is some of this in there. Um, I don't want to take away from the fact that those are the ones that are supposed to be further back. So I just want to give them just a little bit more oomph, shall we say? Right. I really need a nice hot pink. I'm just trying to work out which one of my pinks is going to be pink enough. I think this one, which is another new pastel, is probably going to do it. I can just I 
mean, I know that's not the flowers that they are, but you know what? I don't care. It works. That's the only thing that matters to me. those pinks too pink because yeah we're gonna you know, <laughs> oversaturate everything if I start putting too much of this hot pink in everywhere and it's the red really that I want to kind of get in because it's such a beautiful color now I haven't used this color for a while so I don't know how well this is going to work I've got an orange orangey red which is a bit more vibrant but it's not an orangey red we need so I don't really want to Now, there's a fair bit of this. I'm moving backwards again, aren't I? Let's just bring you forward a bit. There's a fair bit of this and the orangey pink, actually. In fact, actually, we could probably switch to that because the ones that are in the background are actually a bit more, are a bit more orange, really enough. I don't know why, but they are. I'll happily put them in. kind of little bits of red kind of popping through here and there which is kind of what we want not much it's a very strong color so you just want it to kind of accent things a bit better yeah kind of lost this lost you need to put you back vibrant yellow. Mm, be really careful about how vibrant. For example, this is pretty vibrant, so we'll see whether or not... Oh, no, actually, I think that might just do it. I just want to kind of vibe up some of this. I mean, they're in the background anyway, so but I do want to just bring them out a wee bit. Same as this. Yeah, I'm not so, so sure I like those actually. I just think maybe they're too, too yellow, too lemony maybe. Um, thinking, thinking this is probably a, this is more of a kind of creamy. Yeah. Turn it down a wee bit with this. How's that looking? 
A lot better. A lot, lot better. Right. Now. Now we've got all this together. I'm going to add in some lights and darks to the flowers. Um, just so that we can go, yep, yeah, that's the ones. do is all these grasses now because that's really kind of where we need to need to go let me see what I've got in here unbelievably green is not a colour I have a lot of um, fairly obvious reasons because a lot of the pastel pencils I have is for use with uh, for animal portraiture so um, I don't really tend to use a lot of them for flowers. I'm looking kind of for my greens. I'm looking for greys. I have a lot of pencils that turn up, but none of them are the colours I want as usual. Greys. I'm going to pull out the green, browns, and greys. So, most of my pastels, pencils are, I um, don't know how well you're going to see this because how dirty it is, but you might be able to see. That is a pit pastel. I have a lot of those. Um, they're great. They really are great. I love my pit pastels. Yeah, I think grey is one of those colours I need to top up on because I've been using did a grey dog recently. That might be why. Right. But it doesn't matter too much because of course I've got the colours I really need already kind of embedded that I want to add in anyway. So I'm gonna start with um, get some more of these in. too far and too high because you see that's I don't want to do specifically that I need to keep an eye on and that's this fennel which I know is in here so um, I need to make sure that I do draw that in because it's actually quite an important one
getting in what I need. Some of these are grasses. Now grasses don't grow like individuals. So everyone always draws them as individuals. Grasses don't grow as individual stalks. They grow in little weird groups. So you tend to find you'll get little kind of clumps together, which is kind of what we want to make sure that we've got going on here. Okay, right, let's add some pastel pencil in. Oops. So, you guys won't be able to see this as much, I don't think, just because of the colour of it. But, I'm just, it's a very, uh, it is a blue green. So it's a little different from the rest of the colours on here, but because of that, it kind of stands out more. But the thing is with pastel pencils, if I use the pastels, it just layers on top of each other, which is fine, and that is some of what you want. However, pastel pencils actually tend to dig in a lot more, which actually gives you... Um, I don't want to say a better effect, but it certainly gives you a lot more interesting effect. Now, thinking I've got... This is quite a hard pastel, it's a very light pastel as well. I'm not sure I really want a light, light pastel. That's a very vibrant green, but I want vibrant green. Oh, colours. Colours are so difficult. Colours are so difficult. Right. Maybe we'll go with this. See whether or not we can do our fennel with this. So it kind of is... It's kind of like... Here. Yeah. Here. see it on top of everything else which is what we want. is Faber-Castell Polychromos. Um, this is quite hard, so this may or may not go. Yeah. I just wanted to use this to kind of blend bits because it will scrape stuff off rather than
So you can hear that, or you should be able to hear that, um, where it's actually, actually scratching the surface, which is, kind of, not what I want, because I wanna, it provides really fine details, but to do so, it kind of scratches and digs into the surface. This is basically a pencil, um, rather than a pastel, pastel, pastel pencil so um it ends it gives you that really fine lines but at the same time boy it um yeah it digs into the digs into the paper to no end right now i have a what have i got here this is not olive isn't it yeah it's not olive pastel pencil this is kind of what i wanted for What I do is a follow lines of where I've already been with some of the other pass the pencils and that kind of just works with what we've got and there's a lot of grass going on here a lot of bits and pieces I'm just flicking it up just because it helps soften some of the bits and pieces. All right, what's really annoying me is I've lost, I've lost some of this, I've lost some of my dark patches. I kind of want to get some of them back in. find some of the bits from the flowers where I've lost some of the detail. Right, that's looking suitably messy. I don't know what you guys think. I think I've gone a little too far with the with the grasses, but never mind. Should have focused on that earlier, but never mind. background I think had I kept that more of this color um, it probably would be better and I don't know if I can kind of get that back in now um, without kind of losing it or at least losing
Well, kind of worked, kind of didn't. Why do I keep throwing things on the floor tonight? Ah, not good, huh? Is that a bit better? Kind of. It'll do. Yeah. Initial there. Throw all these in here. Um, as most of the pencils are used, put these to one side. Wipe my fingers before I touch this. Is you know, yeah. Um, and then remember that I have absolutely no idea what order I did the tape in. I think I did this one last. Yes, I did. Right. Yeah. Um, Oh, come on. Don't, don't pick up extras. I need those. Right, there's one. Uh, bottom one, or did I do that one over the top? No, this one over the top. So I'll do this one next then. This is picking up the one that's holding it onto the board. Oh, that was right, I did that one. Yeah, I did that one. Okay, right. Hold you down. I'll pull the dust off. Oh, one has come off, but never mind. The last, last one. And there we go. That's another darkish, meadowy one with a lot of neutral tones. I just like the pops of pink in this one, or the occasional bits of yellow. But yeah. I'm not amazingly happy with it, but I'm satisfied. And for this time of night and with a migraine, it'll do lovingly. So, thank you all for joining me. Um, and I hope you all join me again soon for another painting. Check out some of my other videos. Remember to like and subscribe. Also, always leave me questions down below in the comments. I always love to get them and I always love to answer them. It's always good hearing from all of you and your thoughts and feedback. Just it's great to always have art buddies um, and those of you that uh, have the same problem I do um, coloured fingers so see you all soon ta-ta for now